Okay, we're just about ready for uh, session nine, and that is automating a data pipeline for a rapid weeding project dashboard presented by David Arredondo and Matt McDowell from the University of Nebraska at uh, Kearney or Kearney. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that, so please excuse me. I'm going to stop. Actually, first I'm going <laughs> to read the bios, and then I'll stop my share and we can get started. Uh, David is a collections librarian with a background in acquisitions, e-resources, collection development, and licensing. He serves as a representative on the University of Nebraska Consortium of Libraries Research Data Services Group. David also leads the Unaffiliated Data Analysis and Services Interest Group in monthly open calls for librarians to share experiences and knowledge in working with data. Please reach out if you would like to join. Matt McDowell is the Systems Administrator at University of Nebraska, Kearney. He has a background in higher education tech support, shifting specifically to work in academic libraries about 10 years ago. He holds a BA in English and History from Crichton, an MA in American Studies from Washington State, and recently completed his MLIS through the University of Missouri's iSchool. He's a member of the Data Analysis and Services Interest Group. His professional interests are in data analysis and visualization, privacy, and critical librarianship. All right, as soon as you are ready, feel free to get started. All right, thank you. And Thanks everyone for joining today. Uh, we're really excited to participate in this conference. Um, and let me bring up my screen here. So what we're going to be sharing today is our experience with a project. Um, uh, there's a rapid weeding project that we had that went over the course of about two months, uh, weeding, pro or weeding items from our stacks, our government documents, that involved the entire library, and we wanted to track the progress on that project. And this seemed like a really good case uh, scenario um, to try out a few different things. We wanted to, specifically with this project, establish a website dashboard to deliver data to the entire library so we could see how we were tracking against the quotas we were trying to hit. And we wanted to make the process automated from um, harvesting the data, creating the data, harvesting it, depositing it, manipulating it, um, visualizing it, and then actually publishing it on the web. And we also wanted to make it a dashboard that had controlled access. So it was only visible to our library. So in light of that, what we're going to walk through today is that data pipeline. Uh, starting with our data source, which was Alma Analytics. Um, Matt's also going to share about uh, depositing the data and then into the data repository we're using for this project, the SharePoint. And then I'm going to walk through the processes um, in Power BI to manipulate the data and then publish it to the Power BI service um, and then how that process is automated. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Matt to start sharing with the first parts of our pipeline. Okay, so uh, as David said, um, our data initially comes from analytics, from Alma Analytics. Um, it's a pretty straightforward analytics report. Uh, as you can see, we just have a couple of filters. I hope everybody can see my screen okay. Um, we have just a couple of things. We wanted to um, obviously focus on things that have been removed from the collection and then um, limit it to just this project. And then we've uh, excluded a couple of things, the ILL hold shelf and newspapers. Um, if I can flip to the results, hopefully this won't take long to load. Um, we included quite a few columns of data just so that David would have a lot to work with in Power BI. Um, in the, putting the end of the final dashboard, there's a lot to um, work with there. So as far as depositing the data, um, there are obviously various ways to get this into SharePoint, each with its own advantages and disadvantages. There are kind of two basic tasks to it, which is really just getting it out of analytics and then getting it into SharePoint. We didn't need to do much with it in between because um, other than the, well, there isn't really any manipulation taking place in analytics. It's all taking place in Power BI, but we didn't need to do anything in between really. 
Um, usually when we need to get data from analytics on a regular basis, you do it by creating and scheduling an analytics object in Alma. So that's how I started with this project. Um, so the result of that is I get a spreadsheet of the full report every morning. Um, the main advantage there is just the familiarity of that process, but there, though there are a couple of disadvantages. Um, one is that the export only happens on analytics timeframe, which is daily. Uh, if you want to make changes to the analytics report, like to filter out another area like GovDocs, for instance, or something like that, and then you want to re-export that on demand, um, you kind of have to circumvent or mimic the process manually. Uh, the other disadvantage with the scheduled object is just the fact that it means receiving a pretty large email attachment every morning, which I'm not wild about. Uh, I don't normally pay attention to the size of my email inbox, um, but and I didn't want to have to start paying attention to it as a result of this workflow. So um, I'm just not really crazy about that part of it. Um, but we, while we were using the scheduled report for this, uh, there were a couple different ways to automate getting the data from that attachment into SharePoint. Um, one is to use uh, Microsoft Power Automate to export the attachment, unzip it, transfer it to SharePoint, which would be a single kind of set it and forget it workflow, which is ideal, and should also be able to include some Power BI functionality at the end to refresh the data set. Uh, the problem I ran into is I couldn't quite get it to work. I had never used Power Automate before, and I couldn't get all the steps to work properly, especially because um, the report comes in, the attachment comes in as a zip file, we need it as an Excel file, and in that process of extra exporting it and then extracting it, I, I just kept getting hung up in Power Automate. So out of impatience with that, I put together kind of a kludgy workaround where I created an Outlook macro to export the data. I don't know if I have that up. Uh, do. Um, to that this is just triggered from a um, from the receipt of the email and then uh, exports it. It's triggered by a rule in Outlook. And then I had a Windows batch script that extracted from that zip file and put it to a synced SharePoint folder on my computer. The issue here is that it's not a single workflow and handing off an automated process from one application to another like that can make error checking pretty difficult. So for instance, you know, how do I know it's okay to delete the attachment? Do I know whether it was successfully extracted? That kind of thing. So finally, I moved away from the email attachment route and switched to an API Python approach. Um, the big advantage here is that Python script can be run in real time. So if you do mess with the analytics report or something, it's straightforward to just run the process again um, to export to SharePoint. Um, so I'm still using a SharePoint synced folder. Uh, and what the Python script does is it um, accesses the analytics API, downloads the full data set, and then just builds the Excel file from scratch. Uh, ideally, you might streamline it one step further because there are pipeline modules to work with SharePoint, for instance. Uh, but the way our authentication is set up here at UNK, I wasn't able to automate that. It would always require a login and or two-factor authentic authentication, excuse me. So for now, this Python script is how the data gets from analytics to SharePoint. And if anybody's interested, I do have that as a GitHub that I can uh, share the URL for. Uh, and I think the next step from here, so right now this is working and this is uh, where we're at. Um, I think the next step really might be to revisit Power Automate. Um, as I'm exporting the data with Python and skipping the attachment and all that, I might be able to get Power Automate to um, do the actual upload, upload to SharePoint and then also trigger a refresh of the data in Power BI, which right now is a step that has to be done manually. David does that basically. Um, well, if we make changes on the fly, he has it scheduled um, to follow this. But, um, I will go ahead and hand off to data or to David and let him take it from there. All right, thanks, Matt. So at this point in the process, we've got our data. Um, well, I need to get out of here. We've got our data automated uh, to deposit. And so what comes next is the actual steps in Power BI. And so I'm just gonna walk through quickly what that looks like. 
Um, so in Power BI Desktop, where uh, it's easiest to do any of the data manipulation, um, probably the easiest way to see that is in the transform data area. And so in my workbook, you'll be able to see uh, my data set here. This is the Alma Analytics report. And what happens is I set this up to point Power BI at the data in SharePoint using just a web link. And it's in a shared SharePoint site. So I did have to put in um, the authentication login that I used just to log into SharePoint. And then what happens um, are a series of steps that I do to manipulate the data. This particular project is quite simple. Um, so you'll see the data source and then it brings it in. Here's the navigation, simple steps like promoting headers. Um, I renamed some columns and then you can also change data types. So um, a lot of these, it's changing it from recognizing it as a numerical data to string data. And what's nice is as the data refreshes in SharePoint, I can refresh the data here and it will incorporate all that new data and apply these steps um, without breaking. And then in Power BI here is, is where you actually go about building your reports. Um, this project is not very complex. Like I said, we're only working with one um, set of, of tabular data, but you can very easily create um, relations between uh, multiple data sets and do like one-to-one, -one, one to many um, multi-direction relationships. So it's, um, and I've done that in some other projects and we'll probably do it in some some coming up, but it's uh, Power BI is a really robust tool for working with data like this. And so once it applies those steps and I've created the reports, uh, it's the process of publishing to uh, the Power BI service, which I'll jump over to. And you can choose the workspace you want it to go into. Um, but here's my instance of Power BI service. And so if I come into the actual workspace for this project, you'll be able to see all my reports and data sets. And what's nice about this is with all your various reports, which are each of those tabs, um, you can then pin these and construct a dashboard. And then you can even reorder those reports on the dashboard. Um, you can see what it looks like in a mobile format and create that dashboard. And then that goes into the application. But before I show the application, the automation of the data refresh for the dashboard actually happens over in the data sets area. So if I come down to my data set for this project, Under this refresh is where you actually schedule the refresh of the data. And so you can see what I've got is I've got it set to refresh on a daily basis at 6 a.m. or no, let's see, at 7.30 a.m. Central. And then it actually will send uh, failure notifications to me and to Matt if it does not refresh properly. And so the app is the actual delivery of the content on the web. And so here I am in the workspace homepage. And this is where I can update the application and create the name. You can do apply theme colors. If you have support sites that you wanted to link out to, you can do that. And this is also where you can enable which content you want to come. So in one workspace, you can um, actually have multiple different um, Power BI reports set up to publish into the same application, which is pretty handy. And this is also where you can control your audience. And so for one application, so I have one audience set up here. I can create multiple audiences if there were, say, data that I want to share 
that I would like the underlying data to be available for somebody to manipulate versus another group where maybe I want to hide a report or make it just available to specific people and allow them to share or not share. And then I can publish the application. And so the web delivery uh, looks just like this and users can come through. Um, when we talk about the ugly parts of working about data, I'm going to uh, call myself out for my ugly visualizations here. Uh, but you can see I put in some fun uh, different applications that take you through by day the number of items that have been withdrawn in the system starting in October and running through to February 1st. And you can see how that compares to the total numbers that have been withdrawn. Um, not great visualizations, but I think the primary focus of this project really was trying to um, get that automated data pipeline. <clears throat> So in thinking about this project, um, I think some of the good things that really uh, came out of it, one is that there were no additional subscriptions required. And what I mean by that is uh, previously I was really using uh, a lot of uh, Tableau public primarily to work with the kind of visualizations and publishing um, and looking into a different project last year. It looked like getting the expanded Tableau was maybe about $70 a month. Um, so what got me looking further to see uh, Power BI was part of our enterprise account for the campus. And so I was able to easily incorporate that into the process. Um, there's a lot of uh, capacity with Power BI for data manipulation combination. You can even do quick measures. So if you're trying to calculate averages over certain parts of data, um, it can handle those types of things. And there's a lot of good resources for troubleshooting. And this workflow and this type of pipeline um, should be really easily repeatable uh, for other projects. So one that we're really going to be starting here in the next week or so is trying to export um, usage data from analytics along with PO line data for analytics so we can start to calculate things like cost per use. And I know a lot of folks um, giving presentations and asking questions today are interested in that or automated ACRL reports. And that there's web delivery for this project. And so these reports, you can actually produce embed codes too. So if you would like to uh, publish them in a libguide, you can do so, or folks can just uh, bookmark the links to the dashboard. The bad side is that there are still um, data breakdowns that can occur. After we came back from break, Matt and I noticed that we were getting some um, some error messages in the automated refresh. So we would have to go through and tinker and find out where those were coming from. Um, maybe one of the bads that we're still trying to sort out is uh, data inconsistencies that can happen in Power BI desktop versus a service. And so I can show you what that looks like real quick. Uh, my data is refreshed in both the desktop and the service. And you'll see here with my all withdrawn titles running total. I've got about shy of, of 70,000 as a total count. But that number appears quite different in the service. And so we're trying to figure out why that discrepancy is coming up. And that's going to be very important as we move forward with any of our other projects. And the ugly side of this project. Um, if you build it, will they care? Uh, we have, like I said, this was a rapid project that everybody in the library was participating in. And you can see usage metrics for your applications uh, from Power BI. And so there were about 70 views of the data sets from seven unique users, which is not too many. And that could partially be because my uh, data visualizations are not very informative, which is also another ugly part, I think, of this project. Matt, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, I think that's good. Um, 
So before questions, I did just want to, as you heard in the bio, put a quick plug. I think there's a lot of um, like-minded folks out there. Um, we do have a, a small group, maybe more like a club that meets monthly to talk about projects like these and share projects. Um, so if you're interested in getting on those monthly calls, um, please feel free to reach out and really appreciate the folks that that put this great conference together. I was so excited to see all the um, really complimentary um, presentations uh, on the on the outline. All right. Well, thank you both for uh, contributing with one of those complimentary presentations. Uh, I do see one question in the Q and A, and I encourage uh, uh, any oh now too. I encourage anyone to add more in the Q and A. Uh, first one is uh, how did you discover Power BI? Did you evaluate any other BI solutions? I had seen it before. Um, I think just, you know, being at the computer and investigating different, um, you know, maybe starting two years ago, I started looking closer at some of the Microsoft products that were available in our enterprise account, um, just to see, you know, if there were things that could help with efficiencies. So I'd noticed it before, but really didn't have the necessity to go in and look at it. And then I had a project where we were looking at um, trying to create like a publication profile for our university consortium. And so that's when I really found it and started utilizing it. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, have you tried loading the data directly into Power BI using the Alma API? No, we haven't. I haven't seen how to, how to do that. So. Okay. And if anyone else has done that, feel free to add that in the chat. Uh, next question, could you please show the GitHub link again? You could uh, throw that in the chat. Yes. Or Matt, can you throw that in the chat? Uh, yeah. And just for anyone wondering, uh, I've mentioned it before, but I'll continue to mention that all of today's uh, sessions are being recorded and they'll be shared along with the slide decks that go along with them. Okay, thank you for putting that in the chat. Uh, next question is, uh, this was for a weeding project. How did that project meet the objectives? Well, we knew we needed to get, uh, our main focus uh, was really on our, our general stacks and we needed to hit about a 10 to 20% quota just based on the shelving available uh, that we would have after the whole renovation was over. So we were trying to, really get as far as we could in that knowing that it was probably going to be impossible to hit um, that full quota. Um, so we just wanted a way that, you know, for like administration um, and our dean and other folks just working on the project to be able to see how far we had gotten in that process and, and how we were stacking up day over day, um, just as an informative way, instead of going into analytics every day, running a report and then, you know, emailing out that number. Okay, I don't see any more questions in the Q&A. Uh, if anyone does have any questions, uh, please put them in the Q&A. Uh, we still have a few more minutes. Um, so we'll, we'll wait to see if anyone has any more uh, questions that can be answered for a couple of minutes. And again, thank you very much for this presentation. Looks like the GitHub link was shared once again in the chat. Uh, question, um, I guess, addressing one of your previous answers to follow up. Uh, yes, just another BI tool considered. Oh, and I see another question now. Uh, what data determines something to be weeded? That, um was another aspect of the project for which uh, we did use uh, Power BI and uh, tried to set it up so it was more interactive so that folks could actually, you know, inter see a visualization for a, a com component of the collection and right click it and export certain data. Um, and so, you know, I think a lot of the things like circulation, which we had 
aggregate counts because we recently migrated, so we couldn't see um, too specific information of that. Um, but Matt also, with that part of the project, helped with running um, a query into OCLC through the API for holdings counts for a lot of our titles. So we wanted to see how many books were unique to us or only a few copies in other libraries. Um, yeah, but that was another project for which you know I tried to use Power BI to help create those reports um, that you know we went down by subclass level and assigned it to various librarians and sent out lists to faculty on campus. It was really fast and intense. Okay, another question. Uh, who looks at the data slash results? I mean, outside of the library. Um, for this particular project, uh, people outside the library, we, we didn't share, uh, this information with, but I had another project for which I, I did use the audience differences, um, because I had data that I was sharing with more of our administrators. And then I had data that I was, or views of that data that I was sharing with, um, people externally where I didn't necessarily want them to to go in and dig in the data, but I just wanted them to be able to see it and give some feedback on it. Um, but this project, yeah, there really was only one audience for this particular one. Okay, uh, more of a comment than a question. If the goal was to show how close you were getting to the goal, did you consider including the finishing line, e.g., uh, 68,578 of the goal or your running total as a percentage? No, and that is a great uh, thought that crossed my mind a little bit later. Um, but I, you, I think you, you know, in Power BI, I think you would be able to, to do something like that where you could put a quick measure or create a measurement so it would stack up and be able to say, how close you are, you know, so it's like filling up the, you know, the thermometer goal meter. Um, but that would have been a great visualization that my visualizations weren't too informative, I think. Okay, and uh, the only other question here, uh, I think it was actually the first question you answered, but this person might have uh, missed that. Uh, did you consider another BI tool versus Power BI? Yeah, aside from, uh, I, the point of this project that already made the switch away from um, Tableau Public. So for this project, it was kind of just going with what we knew, which was um, Power BI. Okay, um, we still have a couple more minutes. If anyone has any more questions, uh, we will leave this open for a minute or so to see if anyone has any uh, any final question that they'd like answered before we move along. <laughs> 